Hi folks, I uh, hope you're okay today, it's good to be with you. This is Jason Burns and uh, giving you uh, a short sermon on Lot's wife. It's good to be with you. <coughs> Forgive me, I have a little uh, chesty cough and I'll try not to allow it to uh, impose upon the sermon today. Uh, don't forget to look at my website, jasonburnspreacher.com. jasonburnspreacher.com, there's a lot of awesome stuff on there by other theologians and preachers and Bible teachers. And there's a lot of stuff there that will encourage you in your faith. And also there's uh, things if you are searching and asking questions about what the meaning of life is, there's a lot of information on there uh, for you to research. So this is Jason Burns and my website's uh, jasonburnspreacher.com. Uh, if you're in Manchester, we have uh, a, a meeting uh, called the Reformed uh, Hayward Reformed Fellowship. We have a Bible study on a uh, Thursday at 7.30. And we also have a Sunday service at 4 p.m. All are welcome. And this sermon is a sermon that was given uh, to the fellowship on a Sunday afternoon. So without further ado, let's come before the Lord. <coughs> Excuse me. Father God, we come before you today and we acknowledge, Lord, our weakness and frailty. And we acknowledge, O oh God, that you are our God today. <clears throat> Father, we come before you today and we give you the prayers and the glory. And Father, I pray that you might be pleased to bless the ministry of your word today. And so, God, we come before you and we give you the praise and we give you the glory and we give you the honor today. And, Father, we pray that you might be pleased to bless this sermon to people's hearts by the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. If you was to go on holiday and on the beach lie on a dinghy, which uh, sails on the sea. If you go to sleep, you're in danger that the dinghy might drift and drift away into danger. I would hazard to say that the church has been drifting into danger, drifting into a life of sin and a life of not looking to God, but looking to back, back to the ways of man. In Genesis 19.26 we read, But his wife looked back from behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. Lot's wife lived in a time of great sinfulness in the city, in, in the city that she lived in. In Genesis 19.21 we get a taste of what the city was like. And the Lord said, Because the, the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the cry of it, which come unto me, and if not, I will know. Abraham was concerned about the city of Sodom and Gomorrah, so much so that he pleaded with God to have mercy upon the city. In Genesis 19.5 we read, And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. There were some angels that came to see Lot, and the people of Sodom and Gomorrah wanted to sleep with them. It was a time, my friends. <coughs> Forgive me. It was a time, my friends, of blasphemy and sexual immorality, a despising of God. It was this cultural lifestyle that had crept into Lot's wife's heart. It's like going to sleep in a bedroom and the smoke alarm has gone off and you don't hear it and the smoke comes into your bedroom to slowly send you to sleep forever. That's what happened with Lot's wife. The culture of the time got into the heart of Lot's wife. Today we are in a time of, the, of a similar time. We live in a blasphemous age, a sexually immoral age, an age where the things of God are trampled under. 
in Romans 12 verse 2 it says and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God it's a time my friend that you allow the word of God to change you and not allow the world to get into your mind 1 John 3 15 love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the world the love of the father is not in him Colossians 3 2 set your minds on things that are above not on things that are on earth uh, about Moses it said by faith Moses which he was grown up refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin he considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt for he was looking to the reward Remember, we are living in a sinful generation. The, um, the environment of rebellion against God has come into our hearts. That environment has soaked our minds, and we need to get that soaking of the mind in the Word of God and not in the secular age that we live. Lot's wife allowed her mind to be captured by the spirit of the age. She looked back to the pleasures of sin rather than go forward in the obedience of God. Has anything come into your mind from the spirit of the age? What sinful pleasures are polluting your mind? What sinful pleasures are making you look back? Are you going forward in obedience? Number one, Lot's wife did not guard her heart. You know, imagine you were doing a parachute jump and you got your parachute and you didn't really bother packing it properly. You was a bit, well, not really caring about how you packed it. You get into the plane, you fly into the air and then you jump out of the plane with your parachute. It doesn't open properly and you go to your death. <coughs> Excuse me. That is what we're like with our heart. We do not guard our hearts properly. We're careless. Just like packing that parachute, we're careless. We're careless in guarding our heart. Lot's wife was careless in guarding her heart. Proverbs 4, verse 23, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Hebrews 13, 12, Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. If we doubt, if we have bitterness, if we have false teaching, if we allow false ideas to get into our hearts, they will make us loop back to the sins of the world rather than to God. Number two, Lot's wife did not treasure the things of God. When I was a young boy of about five years of age, I remember I used to get pocket money given to me by my grandma and granddad. And I used to put the pocket money under a, a, a rug in my grandma and granddad's house. I did it because the pocket money meant a lot to me and it was a treasure that I would keep and keep safe. Lot's wife did not treasure the things of God. She looked back and therefore turned to salt. Matthew 6, 20 says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Number three, Lot's wife clearly disobeyed God. Now, in the law of the land, it tells us not to murder, but imagine if I murdered someone, or you murdered someone, and we just thought, oh, it's no big deal. The, the, the police won't do anything. We wouldn't have that attitude to the law, would we? We would know that if we murdered, we would get caught and that we would be sent to prison. But we often sin against God and excuse it by saying, oh, it's no big deal. But to God, it is a big deal. Genesis nineteen seventeen, And it came to pass when they had brought them forth 
abroad that he said escape for for the life look not behind thee neither stay thou in all the plain escape to the mountain lest thou be consumed she turned to salt a lot turned lot's wife turned to salt when she looked back but do you notice something she trampled on the commands of god god said don't look back and she looked back and therefore she turned to salt romans eleven twenty two says behold therefore the goodness and severity of god on them which fell severity but towards thee goodness if thou continue in his goodness otherwise thou also shall Sorry, behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God. We can't cheapen sin. We can't play around with sin. God is a great God. And there is consequences to disobedience. 1 Corinthians 15, 2 says, By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise you are believed in vain. My friend, let's not play around with sin. Let's be careful with what we watch, what we see, what we do. Because God, even small sins, doesn't like it. Number four, Lot's wife looked back rather than go forward. You know, there are, in America and in the UK, that, and there are enactment societies, like in America, there's an enactment society for the American Civil War where people dress up as soldiers of, of, of the American Civil War. And they'll spend a lot of money buying the, the armor, buying the, the uniforms, and they live in that time. But it's not the real time. It, the time has gone, but they're living the past. Many of us are living in the past, the past of, 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 of past regrets, where we've done things and we regret the past for what we've done. Many live in the past because of memories. We've lost a loved one and we live in the past. My friend, it's time to stop living in the past. It's time you move forward. If you keep living in the past, you're living in death, you're living in no life. God has called you to live today. You have a life to live today. You have hope for today. You have joy for today. Stop living in the past. Stop dragging up your mistakes. Stop dragging up the pain. Stop dragging up the bad memories or, or the memories of the past. Stop it now. No, don't go back to the past. You've got to go forward. Yes, you've got a future. Yes, you've got a hope. You can do it oh god is with you god has a plan god has a purpose for you oh please don't go back to the past it's but it's but death for you it, it's not what god wants for you you keep living in it you keep running around and and running in your mind the pain of the past the pain of the past the pain of the past and it's not good for you you keep looking around in your mind for 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 memories of the past and and it's not good for you because you're living in the past but god wants you to live today and if you live in the past you'll turn to salt so don't do it anymore go forward god has a future for you brethren says paul i count it not myself to apprehend it but this one thing i do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth with the things which are before Philippians 3.13. And Jesus said unto him, No man, having put his hand to the plough, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Luke 9.62. Lot's wife had her heart captured by the spirit of the age. She did not guard her heart. She did not guard her heart. She did not treasure the things of God. She trampled under the foot God's commands and she kept looking back rather than forward. Our Lord in Luke 17 verse 32 said, remember Lot's wife. In 1 Corinthians 10 6 it says, now these things were our example to the interest we should not lust after evil things as they also trusted. 
Let us turn to Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 16. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 16. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 16. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanliness, inordinate affection, evil, conspicuous, and covetousness, which is idolatry. <coughs> For which things sake the wrath of God come on the children of disobedience, in the which you also walked some time when you lived in them, but now you also put off all things, anger, malice, and blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Let no one, let not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him, where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian or Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is in all and in all. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy and kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness and long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the to 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 the which you also are called in one body, and be ye thankful. And let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. You need to focus your mind on Christ. Focus your mind on the things of God. And don't look back anymore. You go forward now because God is with you. And it's going to be a good year, a blessed year. And God is going to bless you abundantly. He's, he's got so much for you, my friend. He's got so much blessing for you. It's coming into your life. All the joy, the blessing, the peace, and all the blessings for you. But you have to look forward rather than backwards. You have to go forward in obedience rather than backwards in disobedience. It's time you're transformed the renewing of your mind and focus on the things of God let's pray for you today let us pray father God we praise you and we give you the glory and we magnify your name we magnify you oh God we praise you oh God we worship you oh God we give you the glory oh God we praise you as our God today. We thank you that you are our God today, that you never fail us, that you never leave us, that you are with us today. And so, God, we praise you. We worship you. We honor you. We magnify your name that you are with us today. You go before us today. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters today who have heard your word today, that you would bless them, that you would encourage them, that you would strengthen them, that you, Father, would renew them in all things. Be with them, Father, in the name of Jesus, and may this year be a blessed year for them. May this year be a year where they look forward rather than backward. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you for listening. I hope that's been a blessing to you. Uh, please uh, remember my website, jasonburnspreacher.com. JasonBurnsPreacher.com. Lots of ministry there for you to be blessed in. And may God bless you. And thank you for listening to this sermon. And thank you for your support and your prayers. And may God bless you uh, today in, in all that you do and your family. God bless you and take care. God bless.